wise the milk review session. Um, which means no one was trying to get it against Okay, now here, this video right there on the slide. So, show of hands, who's never done a milk review thing before? I am Emeritus Director of Research at Liberty Alliance, which means I used to, and Dan now is, Director of Research at the Andrew Liberty Alliance. And traditionally, the Director of Research has been involved with the Bill Review stuff. Um, I guess before we get into the mechanics of it, y'all have been set up, y'all have accounts, you can review bills now. Great. What I'll do is I'll, I'll first talk for a few minutes about what we intend to do or what's the purpose of having bill reviews. And I think that's important to know before we dive into it. We'll go ahead and look at the mechanics of how you go about reviewing bills. We'll review some bills and see the sorts of things that we uh, that we look for and how to score a bill. Um, and then I'll ask all of you to review some bills, and we'll review your review to make sure that we close the loop. Yeah. So, so why does the Liberty Alliance review bills? Why do we do this whole bill review thing? We don't do it just so that at the end of the year we can give the legislators a letter grade. That's one reason we do it. It's a really good reason to do it. But it's really to impact, to change the course of the legislation. It's to be able to know ahead of time, while it's still actionable, the stuff that's most bad and needs to be imposed and the stuff that's most important that's going to need our support that needs to be supported. It's a way to sort of crowdsource and concentrate some of the arguments that we're going to need to support or take the legs out of legislation early in the process, preferably before any bill has had its first public hearing. Um, I will say that reviewing bills is the most effective thing you can possibly do to get more liberty now no matter what you're wearing. I'd say the only way to be more effective is to put on really nice clothes and go to the state house and do something person to person. But if you can't do that, review these, and in fact, do both. I would say that reviewing bills online, you can learn a lot, and you will learn a lot about New Hampshire's actual laws, and as you review bills, and as you review bills that are of interest to you, you'll find that naturally you'll know some of the RSAs because you've been referencing them regularly, okay? Um, as you do so, it will become easier and easier to review bills and easier and easier to see ways to alter things. There's a limit to how much you can do with that purely in an online sense. I would advise anybody who wants to get involved in this process Go down to the state house and watch some of the public hearings. Another thing you can do, and you can do that as a target of opportunity, Tuesdays and Thursdays in the morning if you can work it. Um, a bill that you find really important to you personally, watch it through an entire session. Whatever, whatever it is that really gets you going, whether it's a gun rights thing, whether it's a uh, uh, a drug thing, all the things that us libertarians love, sex, drugs, guns, all that stuff, right? Take one that's really important to you and follow it. And if you can, be at the hearings, be at the hearings. If, if it's really big and important and Bill has taken the video, at least watch the video. By watching the maneuvering, you get a really good idea of the pro and con arguing points that are going to be made. One of the things we'll do with the Bill reviews is not only figure out whether a bill is good or bad, how good and how bad, and how can we sort of quantify this to sort of triage and put things in some kind of order so we can focus our efforts, but also for those bills that are really important, how to make those key points, those bullet points, that our guys on the inside, like Tammy, like Mark, can use as ammo. And I, I think I'm you know, let me put words in you guys' mouth, but Mark, Tammy, do you find it useful when you're in a public hearing or you're on the floor and bullet points have already been delivered to you with some facts, with some constitutional talking points and so forth? Does this turn out to be useful? Yes. Great, that's what I wanted to hear. Thank you. 
your check is in the mail. <laughs> okay, so so let's let's go through the mechanics of, of how we do this. Okay. So you log in to the Liberty Alliance website at asliberty.org as you have all done. And you'll see a bill review section up here because you guys all have the bill review capability. And the thing to click on is the unreviewed bills. Which, if things work this year, and, and I'm informed that we have just, as in like just, as in while you were waiting in this room, we have just loaded the first bills into the system for 2012. You may applaud. Okay. Now, if I recall correctly, these things are by default ordered in an order based on an action date. In other words, all of these bills are bills that no one has reviewed. We don't know which are really good, which are really bad. There could be landmines in here. There could be who knows. But public hearings are scheduled. And generally, we want to get some intel on all the bills before they have a public hearing. If it's bad, we want to kill it right there. So, um, a typically good thing to do that I typically do is I kind of scan, like, if over the next actionable date, looks like the sixth, you know, what, what is on there that um, is of interest to me personally, that I might know a little about, that I might want to know a little bit more about, it helps if you kind of get some kind of a focus area. Um, one thing I'll say outright, you know, at, at the start, um, Every single session, there's, I don't know, a dozen or so, two dozen bills that are just so hot, and the perennial bills. Right? There will be a medical marijuana bill. I can just guarantee you that. There will be a seatbelt bill. I can just guarantee you that. There will be a no textual driving bill. I can just guarantee you that. Um, some of those perennials, generally a lot of the things have been discussed many times before. You might want to leave those for someone who's done bill reviews in the past. They, sometimes do a, a better job of comparing and contrasting where a bill is going. Um, but, oh, I can't, I, I, I can't help it, I want to. I want to so much. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I am responsible for that. You have responsible? Yes, I did. Yes. Okay. I'm Robert Kingsbury. He and I had a great conversation about this bill. Now, don't spoil it. You're spoiling the surprise. Okay. So, so this is important. Um, let's, let's first click on the bill. Let's see what I want first do is just click on the bill and then start taking a look. Okay. It's filled with a hearing coming up on the 10th at 1 o'clock. And it will be all great information. Um, 1421 FM. Okay. It's the first little nomenclature, right? HB House Bill, a, a, a member of the House of, of Representatives originated the bill. FM. Fiscal note means there's a note on the bottom of this bill that talks about expenditure or revenue, something like that. This has some fiscal impact on the state. Okay, let's, let's scroll down. Okay, some stuff that you will quickly stand over because it's all the way to the plate. Um, an act requiring a vegetarian diet for inmates in the state correctional facility. To start off with the title. It's always good to bear the title in mind. In a bill like this, my guess is that's not going to be materially different from what we read below, but the title isn't always a completely accurate description of what the bill actually says. Bear that in mind. Sponsored, Rep. Kingsbury, LNAP 4. Now, maybe it shouldn't be this way, but over time, you'll come to know which representatives are strongly with us most of the time, and which representatives are strongly against us most of the time. As it turns out, Representative Kingsbury I believe as a former chair of the Libertarian Party of the state of New Hampshire, I know he was a former candidate for state uh, Congress. Congress, United States Congress, on the Libertarian ticket. So my initial inclination is to build, do this bill favorably. Be careful with that. Be careful with that. And it's, and it's contrary. Sometimes your worst enemy in the state house will be your knight in shining armor on an issue. Ask anyone that you care to ask about Senator Peter Burley, who was against us on, let me think now, everything, everything was an opposite philosophy to every one of you in this room, but was our knight in shining armor who saved us with respect to real ID. So, bearing that in mind. Um, Criminal Justice and Public Safety Committee, this is going into uh, the Marks Committee. Okay. 
In all these bills, it's always the case. Um, whenever they have bold italics, they're adding something to the RSAs, brackets, and structure, they're removing the RSAs. Any bill that has any substance basically means it's going to change the book of RSAs, revised statutes, annotated in the book of laws of the state of New Hampshire. A bill does some changes to that text, adds stuff, removes stuff. So let's see what they want to. This is my minority report gesture here. <laughs> okay. New section, gentlemen, is in the guide. Amend RSA 622. Remember, I, I talked about you'll know these laws over time. Um, we'll read this, and then we're going to go and take a look at the RSA in which it's embedded. A lot of times, laws are. This is always the case. <laughs> except this one, except A, except B, except C, and D. Unless F, then G, except. And so when you just read the the one line, it may not be obvious that there's an exception, what's going on, you have to look at the broader context. But this says inmate died. And right away I'm thinking there's probably a list of things about inmates and their treatment. Within six months of the effective date of this section, all men served to inmates in state correctional facilities shall be vegetarian. Dear Lord, are they serious? <coughs> Exceptions may be allowed for Sundays, Thanksgiving, and Christmas. Inmates shall receive vitamin and mineral supplements to their diet as may be necessary. Wow. Okay. All meals are going to be vegetarian in the prisons. I guess they're preparing the place for them. Um, now let's take a look at actually reviewing the bill. Is there a so called black meal in That is a damn good question. Did everyone hear this question? No. Is there a definition of vegetarian in this bill? Yes. In this session? Let's take a look at the relevant RSA. Vegetarian teaching. chicken. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure the only thing you know what do you mean I'm not kind? Just not your <laughs> Okay, it said uh, section 23. Let me just scroll down to that. Just after the religious preferences section, the inmate shall have freedom of religious belief and freedom to worship God according to the dictates of their consciousness. By the way, for those of you familiar, that's the exact copy and paste of part the first article 5 of the Hampshire Constitution? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Here, amen. But this shall not permit anything inconsistent with proper discipline <laughs> and management or any expense beyond that made of this other RSA. Um, religious administrations, appraisers, along with a list of I guess religious. Um, now, in this in this statute, typically in any RSA at the top, there may be definitions. I didn't see any. So if there is a definition of vegetarian in statute, it's not in this specific section. It might be worth doing a search on, on the state website for, for what, what that is. But let's, let's not go there just yet. Um, now that we have some idea of the background of this section of law that's being tapped onto, let's go back to the bill review tab. <laughs> and let's actually review this bill. Oh, 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 yeah. What do I think? We, we got to go to fiscal impact. What was I thinking? Right? And what they had in FN, FN, fiscal impact, the bottom thing would be a fiscal note. Um, by the way, these, these come from a separate department, the, the fiscal notes, and it's actually pretty good. I would say, and I know some people would disagree with me, I would say the majority of the time these notes are not too heavily spun politically. They're, they're pretty much, you know, these are the numbers. Okay? So I tend to take them at face value. The Department of Correction states this bill will increase state fund general expenditures. Increase expenditures. Move it up. By $154,000, then $652,000. $600,000. Look like we're on the general path of $600,000. No impact on county and local. Okay, Department of Correction states that this bill will require a vegetarian diet for inmates in state correctional facilities. The department assumes it will serve a lacto ovo vegetarian diet. No chicken, except for the eggs. As defined as people who do not eat beef, pork, poultry, fish, shellfish, or animal flesh of any kind, but do eat eggs, dairy, dairy product, the lacto ovo vegetarian is most common in North America. <laughs> the department worked with its dietitian to develop a sample one week lacto ovo vegetarian diet. Wow. Can you believe all the stuff they got these people to do just by having a rep file of bill? Based on this simple sample vegetarian diet, the department estimated that lunch meal will 
increased by 30 cents. People do not know where to shop. No. <laughs> and the pivot mill will increase by 35 cents if they not heard of it. Yeah. And you see the For a total increase, the daily food costs 65 cents based on the CPIU for food. I guess that's why the numbers are going up. They have these that. The department assumes the food cost will increase by 4.7% per year, and there's a nice change. Great. So, what inflation is that? 2%. Yeah. Shall we now review the bill? Yes, now, when you go and you click review the bill, something happens. The bill gets locked. Okay, one reviewer at a time. So, it is not uncommon to, if I'm actually going to review a bill, I might actually click review first and then read the bill. Why? Just because that stops someone else from wasting their time if I'm just about to click review and they're about to click review. With a lot of people working, it's not a bad idea to click review first. Now, if for any reason you find that you you can't finish the review. You didn't get done reading it in time. Boy, it's a lot more deep than I thought. I have a question. I don't understand this bill. I've got to take my dog out to do his thing. Quit the review. It's okay. No one will notice. You just quit the review. The important thing about that is it puts it back on the queue so that someone else will pick it up. You don't want it stuck with you in limbo for a long time. That's bad. Right? So, from the, view, uh, from the bill review page, we do get a link to the bill so we can easily get to it from the head. Um, Topics. Um, we don't actually use this all that much, but it's a nice, useful thing after you've just reviewed the bill to just click on one or more of these areas of legislature. It's very, very nice, very, very high value add for the NHLA to be able to say, look, here are all the bills that went through this year relating to small business. Boom. That's actually huge intel. Nobody has that kind of intel across the entire squad of bills. Um, so, you know, look on a couple of things. Infrastructure? Okay. I'm not sure I do with infrastructure. I guess I can do with government spending. Uh, anybody? Anybody? It's got animals on there. Yeah, it's about animals. Animals, right? Animals. I think it applies to animals. That's the whole point. There's no animal. Right. Um, anything like uh, I think that's all the things I can see. Okay. So let's let's go down. Okay. Summary. Remember, I mentioned that the the title of the bill didn't always exactly say what the thing really. Is. Very often, when this comes to play, is you'll see something that says respecting or regarding or pertaining to blah 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 pertaining to the freedom to carry firearms that could be a bill that restricts your ability to carry firearms okay so in summary give a summary that really summarizes what you think this bill is doing in this case i think that sums it up requiring a lacto ovo vegetarian diet for inmates in state correctional facilities i might even yeah uh, okay now, now comes the question. If this appears first on the form. It is not at all unusual, at least for me, to answer at last. Or sometimes what I put here at first is a guess. By reading through the rest of the sort of choices that this page is going to give me, it's going to really help me think about whether this is a pro or anti-liberty bill. So does anybody right now have a, a feeling as to whether this is pro or anti-liberty, this bill? It's anti. I'm hearing anti? Unless you're a cow, so that's pro-liberty. I don't pay for it, and I don't want to. Okay, so, okay, I'm, I'm hearing anti generally around the room. Let's, let's tentatively put the anti there. We'll see how it looks. Okay, now impact. Let me give you some rules of thumb around impact. This, this is important. I, for, first of all, is there anybody here who is pretty sure this is a high impact bill? <laughs> okay, I'll take that as a no. Um, <laughs> okay, Dennis, I have a question. On that previous one, Liberty Friendly, do you have to put pro or anti or can it be neutral? You can leave it unsure, and I think, is there a neutral? And there are things that are neutral. You know, renaming a bridge. And it's not going to cost anything to rename the bridge. Okay. You know, there are some where it can be a mix. 
if, if it's really not clear, and you know, maybe I'll talk about this a little bit more when we get to some bills that are actually unclear. This one's nicely simple because it's kind of simple. Um, when you're not sure, ask for help. Ask for help. The best way to ask for help is what right now? Is it the Yahoo group? Is it the? Yeah, I believe it's on through the forum. The forum? Okay, go to forum.nhliberty.org and just click there with like, you know, HB 1421. <clears throat> Please help. All right, the bill review help topic. Yep. Oh, there's a bill review help topic. For a board. Yeah, board. We have a late board right from here. Look at that. So if you need help, you click help. Generally, at that point, you would click the review. That's perfectly fine. And then it raises the flag. Like, hey, I'm trying to review this bill. I don't get it. There's nothing I can understand. That's fine. Right? In fact, we love that. I love that. Where we go with this? Oh, yeah. Okay, so impact. Right, some rules of thumb. Okay. If something affects everybody in the state, or virtually everybody in the state, it's typically high impact. Okay. If something has a significant impact on the state's fiscal position, if we're talking, you know, something on the order of, I, I would put it around five million, you know, if, if we're going to go up or down in, in expenditures five million or more, yeah, that's where you start to get into the impact. Very, very common. Uh, and, and so, so these bills that are typically super high, that a lot of people, you know, they tend to be high impact. Um, just give some examples of, of high impact bills. There are things like uh, seat belts. It's probably low impact to any individual person, but it affects everybody in the entire state. Um, whether or not the state will, part, will, 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 will basically fund some kind of a transit program, right? We're going to have trains, like commuter trains, that the state is going to sponsor, going from Boston up to Kittery, Mass. It's going to you know, billions of dollars on the table and with the state being involved. Anything that establishes a new state bureaucracy, there shall be a department of something, that's high impact. Okay? Medium impact things typically are things that have a really high impact to a specific group of people. And it sucks. And there's a lot of these every year. That typically there's a regulate, regulatory sort of thing. Okay? We're going to regulate uh, not home improvement, but feng shui, but we're going to call interior designers, right? If you're going to regulate interior designers, it sucks if you're an independent interior designer. It's high impact to you, but just to like a particular uh, community of people, as I would say. Typically, those are things that we would put at um, you know, things medium or moderate impact. Low impact things typically really have no bearing one way or the other. Um, Canonical examples of low or no impact are resolutions. If it doesn't actually change any RSA, pretty much by definition, it's low impact. You might really agree with it. Wow, this is, we're telling the United States to just go blah. That's great, but it's a resolution. It's not a vote to secede. It's not a vote to I don't know, alter the Constitution. Oh, and by the way, just about anything to uh, change the Constitution, typically, is by definition high impact. Um, often you'll see bills that form a study committee. A study committee by definition is not high impact, even if it's a committee to study a thing that you consider so horrible it cannot possibly be allowed to take this one step forward, but if it's just a committee to study the issue, triaging, probably we would you know, rate this a lower priority thing. Okay? Am I missing stuff? Because I'm really looking to people who are much more in the pit than I am as far as impact. That's still a lot fiscal. Fiscal, I, I, I kind of said, if you, you get around the $5 million impact rates, it starts to get pretty high. Uh, rule of thumb. Your nickname is Taximator, so I'm looking at you like you would know. <laughs> yeah, that's a good start, $5 million. Maybe less than that, actually. Like, fairly small. Okay. okay. Yeah, right. So, so, I mean, sort of ask the collective wisdom of the room. What, what, what's your first get set and impact on this bill? High, medium, low, low, uh, low. low. I think it's average. Yeah. It's 
to prisoners is extremely high. Is it only to only to non-vegetarian prisoners? <laughs> what was the total of this little thing? Very small, right? It's not half a million. Half a million. Half a million. Six hundred thousand, seven hundred thousand, half a million. Every year, every year. Okay. So, for the purpose of going forward for the moment, we'll leave it at low, going on democratic principles. But you know, the argument could be made for medium. You'll find this very frequently throughout. The argument could be made for, and use your judgment to some degree. Um, Something like, I wasn't really sure about the impact. I would generally go ahead and continue the review, but I might post in the forum, please take a look at my review. I'm not sure about the impact. That's fine. These nagging voices that you have about the questions you have, making these decisions, we have sections for that at the bottom. Oh, okay. Free forms. Okay. Awesome. Okay. There's a little checkbox there for study committee. Does this bill only seem to create a study committee? As I mentioned before, we like to flag those right away so that we can ignore them. Okay. In this case, it doesn't. It doesn't say it's establishing a committee. Okay, now, now we get to the little thing that helps us determine whether something truly is pro or anti-liberty. Um, these answers will affect the total score of the bill, but I like to think of them more as being ways for us to really objectively think about the pro or liberty and, and magnitude of impact of the bill. So, civil rights, does this bill protect the rights of the people or supplant them with new government-granted privileges? Protect rights, demean or eliminate rights, not applicable. Thoughts? No. No, no it demeans rights. Yeah. Those people aren't sentenced to death and some people have medical issues, they can't eat vegetarian diet. Does the way the prisoners will continue to It doesn't matter, so they're not sentenced to death, are they? Like some people cannot eat high carbohydrate vegetarian diet. Uh, you have to get a few thousand calories from something. If you okay. don't get it from meat, then you get it from We're not actually debating the whole bill. Right? <laughs> the bill had medical. Well, is this an option? As, as you, uh, I'm sorry, what's that? Is, is this an option right now? Can they do it? Can they offer a vegetarian diet right now? That's a good question. Not a, but not actually required to serve meat, I don't think. This is just mandating, isn't it? This, this is, is just establishing a new mandate. The difference right? between not offering and mandating. Uh, and typically with, with rights, we're, we're kind of looking more at, you know, does this grant special rights for class of people? Uh, does it, I guess I, I could go with the means or eliminates rights in that you do go into prison still retaining some rights. You've had some of your rights severed from you. But, as you say, it's not, a, it's not intended to be a death sentence. It's not intended to be, I don't know. It, it's interesting, but... As you, as you do these debates, and as you have this conversation, keep in mind some of the points, because there's some bits further down where we can, where we can make some of these talking points for or against. Um, I, can, I, you know, I can honestly see this one going out of the way, not applicable or eliminating rights. Uh, Dan's driving, I'll let Dan shoot. Okay. Um, not a book. okay, personal responsibility. Does this bill increase the personal responsibility of individuals, or does it promote Protectionism or victimhood. Uh, increases responsibility, promotes victimhood, or not applicable? Not applicable. Not applicable. Does this bill protect personal property? Protects property, takes or control someone else's property? Well, unless you count the slight increase in taxes. And, yeah, generally, taxation will be dealt with in a separate. Right. In, in a way, some of these are. Bills fall into these categories very often. It's not so much like, can I somehow shoehorn this bill into this question? It's more like, is there an obvious yes or no on this bill? Um, I'd probably not not agree with this. Clarity. Yes, clear. The worst legislation in the world can be nice and clear. That's OK. It is actually useful to give some kind of positive feedback that at least the bill was honest and clear. You will find those, especially Senate bills, that they'll just, you know, alter the definition of what dead means. Right? Or, you know, the definition of like, you know, what is a grave? And, you know, you've got to know that the guy's brother has a business that, you know, and, you know, and, and, and. Well, let me ask you this. Given that there was no definition of vegetarian, there is that opinion 
that it was opto black code. I mean, is that going to hold up in court? That those that would be a good thing to put in the uh, in the pro and con like bullet point section. As far as the definition of lacto, uh, oh, well, oh, well, well, the definition of vegetarian is that yeah. Remember, that was only the fiscal analysis. Okay. By, by and large, I think if you if you take a look at legislation that is duplicitous and unclear, you'll know, especially when it's really thick. You know, I New Hampshire potential legislation that's like three or four pages. You know, to look at something that's that's screwy. Um, at any rate. It's pretty much honest and clear, at least on its own uh, Does this bill absolve officials and agencies of civic responsibility or hold them liable for abuses? No. Not quite. You could argue that it's an abuse to start with. Okay, this is an important point. Constitutionality. Does this bill adhere to the letter of the law established by the New Hampshire Constitution? You'll notice there is a link. <laughs> Okay, um, it is understandable reaction, particularly at first, for people to say, that's not unconstitutional, that's unconstitutional, how can they do that? You know, we have the right to pick your thing. Okay, in order to be useful from the standpoint of affecting the outcome of the legislation, can you point to an article in the New Hampshire Constitution and clearly indicate why this verbiage in the Constitution prohibits or encourages the proposed legislative change. That's what we're going for. So if you pick constitutional or not constitutional, please be prepared to like have an article, you know, to have an article you can point to it and, and talk to in some, you know, in some way. Otherwise, it's not um, I will say this: you don't need to know the whole New Hampshire Constitution. You should know the Bill of Rights. They put it first in the Constitution. It's part the first. It's not that long, right? It's maybe three pages front and back in the little book that I got from, from, from the Secretary of State. You can pretty quickly get an idea of the whole thing. Take some time and read it. I'm serious. I'm serious. Um, you know, having read through that couple of pages a couple of times, I right away think of Part First, Article 18, that talks about punishment being uh, proportionate to the crime. I'm sure the folks in criminal justice are familiar with that article. Um, I could see an argument there about, you know, the punishment being proportionate to the crime. This sets like a minimum, you must eat a, lack of, a vegetarian diet. Right? I could maybe see that. Uh, any thoughts on constitutionality of the bill? Or, or I think cruel and unusual appears in the New Hampshire custody, um, but certainly proportionate to the crime appears. I would still say the medical issue is, is big. It could certainly be way out of out of line because of the medical issue. Any other thoughts about constitutionality of this particular bill? 
probably not something you should like. Yeah, well, it's NA unless it, unless it improves the constitutionality of the law. So this would, this would be not applicable, I would say, unless you want to make an argument for punishment not being a crime. Yeah, I'd actually agree with all of that. I'd leave it as not applicable. But I might mention something in the constitutionality section or in the section of arguments for or against that, you know, you could possibly make an Article 18 case here. Punishment not being applicable to the proportion of the offense. Enforceability. Is this legislation easily enforceable or arguably burdensome, perhaps unenforceable, right? So the law that says that, you know, you can't do certain practices in the bedroom is unenforceable because we don't have a cop in everyone's bedroom yet, right? Um, yet, law, be, yet being yet, not I, 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 I to get there for a reason. Um, on a law that's something that's clearly enforceable as well, I guess something like this. It's really obvious if they're giving the inmates black market meat, right? Um, can't keep members out of prison. Cannot keep members out of prison either. So, so, you know, I'm just going to go ahead and say this is probably easily enforceable. Does this bill decrease or increase bureaucratic and regulatory infrastructure? Yes. So, again, the you, most, you would say most things would be NA for enforceability unless it's clearly unenforceable or clearly easily enforceable. Like if it's mostly enforceable but it'll be tricky sometimes, then that's NA. In your mind, if they're going to have, if, it, if it's going to be difficult to enforce this law, in your mind, if they're going to have to significantly change the way that the police are operating or the way the bureaucracy operates to, to catch this infraction, unenforceable. And generally, clear directives to the bureaucracy to change the means in which they are operating is fairly enforceable. This is this is the government instructing, one part of the government instructing another part of the government to change what it does, and that's usually pretty straightforward. How easy is it to enforce, how easy is it to determine who released uh, that helium balloon? That's a reference to a balloon, uh, uh, the, the infamous balloon bill a few years back, those who are new. Uh, it, it was a bill that criminalized intentional release of helium balloons, to which, you know, we can argue on the merits, but certainly it's not easily enforceable. I mean, you found a helium balloon. Someone must have done a crime. Uh, especially the, the intentional part also. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, by and large, uh, as far as bureaucracy, right, this doesn't really touch, this doesn't add any bureaucracy, particularly, it doesn't really add any regulatory infrastructure as a, yes? I mean, any restrictions on what they can and cannot do, it's going to make some kind of bureaucracy for figuring out what the rules. This is yeah. a big, a big private position of me, but it's this, this is changing what the, what the existing feeding apparatus I was thinking of the law that, uh, like, the, the it's a sauce with a vegetable thing, like... That's right, which thing? The Congressional Congress for the uh, schools. Okay. So, like, as soon as they have rules, they have to figure out how to or whether or not they have I think this question is more directed towards bills that really do this almost as like a primary purpose or as a significant part of their life. Here, here's an example. There was a bill to uh, decriminalize industrial hemp, or to legalize industrial hemp, which instantly right away I'm in favor of. Great, you know, just by the title. Good. One of the many bad things about the bill as it was constructed was that it established an enormous bureaucracy. So they were going to have like seed police and there were going to be the amount of regulation was unbelievable, or it's not like they could just, you know, grow a pencil and sell it, or even just be like licensed and sell it. It was like crazy. So, so it's clear it's having Yeah. Yeah. If, if you have generally for all these questions, if you think more than about 30 seconds on the question, you're you're getting too deep into this. <laughs> not not to move on. Really. Really. You're not supposed to agonize over these. They're supposed to just help you in the thought process for this bill. Um, Question? Yes. At any point 
during this, if they decide they no longer want to review the bill, can they just stop? Yes, at any point when you realize, whoa, I'm getting it way over my head. This is like, as I think about this, or as I read this, I, you know, I need help, someone else needs to look at this. Yes, you can go right here and put the review. That's perfectly fine. No one will think less of you, you lose no face, right? Okay. But it won't help you get any farther and closer to being the bill reviewer of the year. <laughs> and that also means that something cool happens to you, and I have to know in past years that's included free seats at the Liberty Dinner, but I have no ability to promise any future results. So, <laughs> fiscal impact. Is the fiscal impact of this bill on private citizens positive, none, or negative? A positive fiscal impact would be where a bill reduces taxes or costs. Low negative. Low negative impact. Yeah. Right. Okay, tax section. Does this legislation charge everyone for a cost or only those who will use it? This is an important point, right? We are libertarians here. Some of us are anarchists here. But the existence of a tax in a bill does not immediately mean it's a bad bill. We do, well, well, as some people may disagree with me. <laughs> If there is a tax that is really a user fee, that is not so bad. We will generally give points to a bill if it's a fee for users and not a broad-based tax on everyone to increase one particular economic activity. So a, a, a tax on income, say, on virtually everyone to pay for, I don't know, uh, vegetarian meals at the prison, which is pretty much what we have. We, this is coming out of the general fund. This doesn't say that there's going to be some tax. It doesn't say that there's how it's going to be paid for. It's coming out of the general fund. It's a tax on everyone. So it's a tax on everyone. We could actually give it some positive. Some, if, you know, whoever wanted to do this, if they at least thought about how it's going to be paid for, ensuring that those who will benefit from it, like, you know, I guess have the prisoners work to milk the cows or whatever. That, that we would be happy with that. Okay. Constitutional note. If you click that a bill is constitutional or unconstitutional, please put something here. Please don't say a bill is unconstitutional and then not say anything here. That, that's no good. That, that, that's, now we have to figure out the bill. We've got to read it. Maybe we're not, you know, we've got to read the RSA. We've got to think about all these things. By the time you get to this point in the bill, there's reasons at the bottom. By the time you get here, you've had a chance to read the RSA. You've had a chance to think about some of the things that make a bill pro and anti-liberty. You've had a chance to maybe glance through and review the New Hampshire Constitution. I'm, I'm serious about all this stuff now. Um, so you're in a perfect position to at least get some thoughts down, right? If there was something to do with the Constitution, either affirming it or, or contradicting it, please give the section an article, section one, article 18. Uh, it was, you know, this is uh, clearly, uh, you know, for many criminals, this will be a, a, a punishment that is not proportional to crime. Okay, that's a constitutional note. Now, Agree or disagree with it, really that applies to this bill or whatever, but you've got to have, uh, yes, the Bill of Rights. you got to have article and section here to have a constitutional note. Okay, pro liberty talking points. Here's how the car hits the road, right? You just read all this stuff, thinking about it. Um, this is the ammo you're giving to our guys to go to fight for you. And what works great right here are a couple of bullet points. You don't want to be typing long, like, you don't want a dissertation here. You want bullet points, okay? So there were, there were a couple of items that we had. Um, so right away, that medical, is there a medical exception in the RSA? What, what, you know, these, you know, this, this, for, some, for some inmates, this could be, this could have medical impact. We should note that. That's a great note. Let's put that in there in the, uh, now, of course, this is important. Um, <coughs> pro liberty talking points attacking the bill. We already said that this bill is a anti liberty bill, right? Just getting that clear. So the pro liberty points for this bill are going to be those that are ways that we don't want to pass the bill. If the bill was a pro liberty bill, we put things there that support the bill. 
Okay. But what if it's a mixed bag? Ah, like most bills. Yeah. <laughs> For those, review, do the best you can. If at the end of the day you're just unsure, um, it's not it's not bad. If you've got some points, you know, maybe you've read it, you've thought about it. These are the pluses I see, these are the minuses I see. Put them down in pro and anti summary talking points. Mark it unsure. Save your review. And then go ahead and say, hey, I need some help looking at Bill HB 1421. Here's some positive things, here's some negative things, you know, asking for the wisdom of the group. You know, the Rotarians would love to argue with this stuff, right? Um, okay, definition of a whole elective vegetarian came up in court. Sheriff Arpaio coming to New Hampshire. Sheriff Arpaio coming to New Hampshire. I would probably put something there like, you know, needless extra expense. to 
use. And the more accurate you can be, the better arguments you can come up with against or, or against you know, against liberty, the better. Yeah, honestly, I think the fiscal no torpedoes this bill. I think this bill is dead on the right. Why? It's going to cost money. And who on earth is clamoring for this bill? So, Bob Kingsbury. Bob Kingsbury, yeah. Maybe animal rights activists. Yeah. Cruelty, cruelty should not be used to feed our prisoners. Oh, yeah. In, in, in humane, uh, well, not in humane, I guess. Animal cruelty. Meat is murder. Oh. And I don't see why I mean, I, tasty, I guess I despise any cardboard around, but I, that animal cruelty should not be traded for inmate comfort sounds kind of legit to me. Good, good. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's just not great. <laughs> That's not what I'm saying. The better they are. Okay.
I know I made, I made, a, I, I made an alias for that because I was tired of remembering that. Yes, I made it something like do not touch issues.
for whether someone gets the idea of negative rights, of liberty. Okay? If a bill has, a, has points one way or the other, and we, you know, it, it's not obvious, there are pros, there are cons, this is probably not a good candidate. A bill doesn't have to be super high impact to be a report card candidate. Uh, a bill that has very low impact but just, you know, establishes a subsidy on local production of milk, right? Subsidizing local milk production. I think we've done that at one point. Very simple, feel-good bill that, like, established a general tax to, to support one particular area of uh, economic growth. I just reviewed a requirement to have students stand in place of allegiance. Requirement to have people stand in place of allegiance. Okay. Minor impact, but report card candidate. Possible report card candidate. Is it litmus? Litmus test is what we're looking for. Simple, no shades of gray. Let me ask the group. Is this a report card candidate? Yes. Yes? What? What's the question? Is this bill a report card candidate? No. Is this the vegetarian one or on the standing for the vegetarian? Oh, it's not vegetarian. I thought you talk about standing for the vegetarian. Ah, okay. Yeah. Andy's confused about what we're eating. Um, no, a vegetarian. No, 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 no. no. Why not? Because it's a waste of time. It's a, it's a little uh, in, in, like you know, uh, it's not clear. Because we're trying to have, to have both opinions on a prisoner <laughs> diet. There is no clear. There's no clear prisoner <laughs> diet. There's no liberty issue, and the bill seems like the diet. I see a clear liberty issue. issue. You're going to force people to have a particular oh, diet? Yes. There's a clear liberty issue, but most likely yeah, there's I no answer. Diet. Yes. I think so that's one other that's one other point. For something to be on the report card, it has to have had a roll call. A bill without a roll call, we have no way to know how everyone voted, so we can't put it on the report card. Uh, you can't know that ahead of time, but with this bill, yes I can. So you can be pretty sure this was not going to a roll call. I can venture to say that that will not be up here on a roll on a gold standard because they will be on the consent calendar, I feel. <laughs> <laughs> so there'll be no need for it to be. Right, by the way, I, I just heard a term use consent calendar. Does everyone know here what is the consent calendar? Who does not know? Who does not know? Oh my god, okay, I have a miss. <laughs> we'll finish the review of this bill, then I'll go over quickly uh, how a bill becomes a law in New Hampshire, which is not like a stupid cartoon. Uh, let's let's uh, yeah, that's, that's, you use Chrome? Did you use Chrome? <laughs> Okay, um, okay, it doesn't matter necessarily whether the bill is super high impact or not, although generally if it's high impact and it's pretty obvious one or the other, yeah, I'm going to put it on there, medical marijuana. Um, but in this case, probably I would not say this, is a, this should be on the report card. Right? Um, and lastly, we have one here, flag is interesting by the next lay member. Um, this may happen to you, it certainly happens to me. Uh, someone will come to you in the community, among your friends, maybe a rep, maybe someone who's involved, maybe they're involved in a, uh, some particular trade, and that trade is going to be regulated, whatever, and they say, boy, you know, I hope you guys really take a look at this bill. They're going to regulate all of us interior decorators. It's like that. You can just put there as a flag, that, hey, someone flagged it as interesting, and they just put in the notes. My friend's the interior direct decorator, and, and all the interior decorators are, you know, up in arms about this stuff. Just let us know. You know that, that's good to know. All right. We're talking about the consent calendar. Yeah, I'm going to talk about all that stuff. Okay. So we, we completed the review. Typically, having done all this, oh, oh one other thing I, 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 we should put in the uh, pro liberty notes that that you know, arguably this this bill is. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> good, actually, no, I'm terrible. Uh, shut up. <laughs> I was actually thinking about a different bill. So forget that. Forget that. Stop. Well, it, it's still, you'll, you'll probably. Okay, thank you. All right, so let, let's just do a final scan. This is all good. And, and mostly the, the final scan, what I like to look at is the impact and the liberty. Right, so are we sure that this is low impact and the entire liberty having gone through all this exercise? Mm -hmm. Anyone not sure? I'd say neutral. Prisoners have rights. It's such a health issue. I'm a Democrat, so I'm telling you prisoners have rights. I think it's I think it's anti-liberty just because the fiscal impact for starters. 
I see them. between fiscal impact and the whole rights issue, I, I, I'd be pretty adamant about it being anti-liberty and you know, and I can buy the lowest impact on this. I could maybe argue medium impact, maybe, but I, I have a question. Stuff. Okay, so when you're judging everything, you're judging it like for that, for low, high, anti-pro, you're judging it based on what it says. So like I think it would have a small positive fiscal impact. It seems very unlikely to me that it would increase costs unless they're just doing it wrong. But it's a state. <laughs> and they do it wrong all the time. So you have a point, but are we so it's based on what they say is gonna happen, not on what you think will actually happen? This is one of those cases where yeah, I would call into question that fiscal note. That could certainly be argued. And it's based on very limited data. Too. And I think that probably deserves more than the third of that it was given. Um, I would probably state it something more along the lines of, you know, there are serious questions about the fiscal impact on this bill. It seems highly unlikely that a vegetarian diet would end up costing more than one including meat. Every moment on, the other ones are Okay, very good. Um, what are they going to do when they outlaw uh, 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 vitamin supplements? Yeah, those are probably going to be Kodak. 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 So we're basically done here. Again, it's really important to either quit the review or submit the review so that you know, so that it's entered the system. So let's hit submit. And that's one that we won't see. <laughs> and that's no longer the unreviewed list. And if we have any questions about it, we should now post it on the, on the forum and say, hey, take a look. My question is this. How can I find out the life cycle of that bill so I can go and testify against it? Okay. okay. I'm glad you asked that question. Now we're at the reviewed bills page where it now appears because we reviewed it. Um, so, so, so you can kind of order things by, uh, by score. And I think you can just refer to all the stuff here, right? Um, the question came up, how can I follow this bill? 